Uh, welcome to another day of the creek. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, I'm having a wonderful day here, getting all your work ready for next week and looking at all the work that you've sent me so far. Again, absolutely fantastic. Well done. Hope you're all having a lovely day. So let's start. We are on chapter, I believe, chapter 18. Let's have a look. Doc trick. 19. Um, and let's get going. A large pink milkshake river flowed round a silver castle in the centre of it all. Lucy rubbed her eyes and saw that the castle was in fact made of hundreds and thousands of sparkling silver dustbins stacked high on top of one another. Wow, Lucy said out loud. This place really was strangely amazing. She couldn't help but want to dive into the milkshake river and go for a swim with her mouth wide open. Two women skipped by, holding hands, eating enormous lollipops and giggling like little kids as they played in the falling popcorn, trying to catch it on their tongues. Excuse me, Lucy called to them, but the woman turned and blew raspberries at her, then ran away laughing. As Lucy watched them go, a crowd of men burst out of a toy shop, kicking a brand new football. On her head! One of them called and toe punted the ball so hard it smashed through the shop window, showering the street with glass. The men fell about laughing. Nice one, Simon, said another man said. Let's drink some cream soda and go on the rides until we puke again. Lucy, who didn't usually consider puking very funny, found that a little giggle was making its way out of her mouth. Oh, she said, taking pictures, taking herself by surprise. Just then, a great blast of trumpets broke out from the far end of Main Street, Creakerland. Oh, it's a parade! cried an elderly man next to Lucy, beaming and turning a cartwheel as a row of giant floats began cruising their way down the street. Crowds of all the grown-ups of Whiffington suddenly emerged from the Main Street shops and attractions. The video game arcade, the ice cream spa, the comic book library, the hot fudge hot tub and the petting zoo, filling the street to watch. Wrinkly, Mr. Rad Radcliffe was there in his underpants. Molly the milk lady was handing out wallop milkshakes and even Mario was jogging backwards along Main Street. Then Lucy spotted Mrs. Fudge McScroodles, who owned scrummy McScroodles sweets and stuff. Old Man Carvey, who ran the butchers, Paige Turner, the librarian, and even Piers Snorsgan from Wakey Wakey Whiffington. They were all here in Creakerland, having fun in their pyjamas. The grown-ups whooped and cheered as the parade came past, as though they were having the time of their lives. It was fun, but Lucy couldn't help but feel that this was all wrong. These childlike people around her were the grown-ups who should be in Whiffington with their children and families, not down here. Lucy turned away, her mind racing. A lady with curly white hair skipped past her holding a large chalk ice. The chocolate was melting in her hands, making them sticky and messy. The lady tossed the melting chalk ice on the ground and it landed with a splodge right at Lucy's feet. Excuse me, aren't you going to clean that up? Lucy asked. The lady's expression changed from a sort of hypnotic excitement to utter hysterics. Clean it up! <laughs> she called, good one! I'm off to get a fresh chalk ice! Want one? As much as Lucy would have loved a chalk ice, she knew that there was some sort of wallet magic at work here and magical chalk ices were not to be trusted. No thanks, she replied and watched the old woman run full speed down Main Street to the chalk ice vending machine faster than a kid running downstairs on Christmas morning. As the woman disappeared, another grown up came into view. Lucy stared at the distant figure, then... As she realised what she was seeing, she clapped her hands over her eyes and peered through her fingers. It was an awful sight which she was afraid she could never unsee. It was Ella's father, the mayor of Whiffington, but he wasn't wearing any clothes. At all. Lucy groaned as May Annoying, who was usually very serious indeed, ran down Main Street completely naked. He was covering up his funny bits with a ridiculous Creakerland mayor's hat, screaming, I'm mayor of Creakerland, and I declare this the best place ever, at the top of his lungs. Lucy quickly shut her eyes tightly as her bare bottom whizzed past her, as his bare bottom whizzed past her and disappeared down Main Street. 
I couldn't agree any more, said Piers Snorsgood, as his film crew captured the mayor's naked moment. That's about all from me, Piers Norsgan. See you tomorrow for another wakey wakey wallop. He winked smugly at the camera before the broadcast ended and the film crew high fived each other. I'm never telling Ella about this, Lucy muttered to herself. She stared at the chaos around her. What the chickens is going on? she wondered. Why are all the grown ups acting so. so. And just like that, she understood why the grown ups were acting like grown-ups anymore or weren't acting like grown-ups anymore. It was all so blindingly obvious that Lucy slicked her hair over and slapped herself on the forehead for not realising it sooner. <sighs> of course, she thought, this is the twisted work of the Walleb again. Everything in this place was different. It was backwards and the grown-ups were no exception. Because the grown-ups weren't grown-ups down here. They were naughty and silly and fun like children. And most importantly of all, they were messy. Lucy looked around at all the litter on the ground. There were sweet wrappers, greasy fish and chip papers, lollipop sticks, bottles and cans. There were scattered jelly babies and drips of chocolate. There were bits of broken glass and piles of discarded popcorn. There was litter everywhere. Just what the creaker wanted, Lucy realised. The grown-ups had been snatched away into the wallop and had forgotten about their lives. This place had erased their responsibilities. It had made them forget all the stresses and worries of the real world and remember instead what it was like to be children, to simply have fun. A life without consequence. It was only then that Lucy realised the true meaning of the word she hated, impossible. How was she ever going to fix this mess? Impossible is just in your mind. Impossible. Is just in your mind, Lucy repeated to herself. At that moment, she heard a laugh she recognised and spun around. She looked down the glistening green paved street and saw a giddy girl tumble out of the exit of the waltzer, fall to the shiny floor and begin rolling around in a fit of giddy giggles. Let's do it again, she said laughing. Lucy stared. It was her mum. Chapter 20. Normal... Normalatron. This is a disaster. We're all doomed, Ella whined, flopping into Lucy's pillow dramatically. Norman paced around the room behind her, his feet squeaking on the creaky floorboards in rhythm. Not necessarily, he said. Oh, please, Norman, it's useless. Mama and Papa are gone. Lucy's gone. There are monsters under our beds and yet there are only white marshmallows left. Ella inspected the half empty packet of sweets. This is the worst day of my life. I officially quit. Lucy wouldn't quit on us, insisted Norman. She didn't give up on the grown-ups. Ella sighed. <sighs> OK, Mr Scouty Pants, with all the badges, what do we do then? Norman closed his eyes and thought as hard as he could. What would Lucy do? They both sat there in Lucy's bedroom, wondering what Lucy would do if she woke up and found out that she was missing. What would Lucy Dunkston do if... Wait a second, Ella said, interrupting the narrator. We already know what Lucy would do. We do? Uh-huh, she already did it when the grown-ups first disappeared. Norman scratched his neatly combed head, trying to remember. She put on her school uniform, he guessed. No, don't you remember what she said? How did my mum find out what was going on in the world? Ella said in her best Lucy voice. Norman's eyes lit up. The news! Right, you know what? We just worked all that out together. We're a team now, Norm. We've got to stick together, Ella said. Yeah, like two Transformers coming together to build an even bigger, even better one, Norman agreed excitedly, linking his fingers together to demonstrate. Norman and Ella... Together, we are Normelatron, he boomed. This time, it was Ella who scratched her head. Slowly. Too much? asked Norman nervously. Too much, Norm. Let's just go and switch the TV on, she said. They both ran downstairs, Norman switched on the TV, and together they began searching for news on Lucy. Chapter 21. Lucy in Creekerland. 
Mum! Lucy called out across Main Street, Creakerland. But her call was completely ignored. Not just by her mum, but by every misbehaving grown-up around. She ran straight over to her mum and helped her to her feet. She stared at her. Her mum's usually neat brown curls were frizzed and tangled and her pyjamas were crumpled and splodged with what looked like strawberry ice cream. That was so much fun! You've got to try it! Let's go! Mrs Dunstan cried, tugging on Lucy's arm as she tried to ride the vomit-inducing waltzer again. Right, we're going to stop there.